Hello everyone and welcome once again to Thursdev. I'm your host Luke and today we'll be doing a little final housekeeping as we wrap up this 11 part series on the topic of making your game. It's been a long road, no doubt, getting to this point. As I mentioned last week, shipping a game is an impressive feat in and of itself, but if you did manage to make it all the way to the finish line and start seeing some revenue from your project, it's time to start taking stock of what you've got and considering your options going forward. After you've finished making your game, honestly, the first thing you'll want to think about will be something you should already be fairly confident in your opinion of by this point. Whether you're willing to do it all again. I don't really get into it all in general when doing these videos, but game development is a roller coaster of victories, losses, warm fuzzies, frustrations, exhilaration, exhaustion, uncertainty, relief, and everything in between. It's mentally and emotionally, as well as despite being largely a desk job, physically taxing. If you've finished making a game, you're likely to have experienced all of the above, and you should be able to ask yourself and answer, is this something that I'm willing to make a career of? It probably sounds crazy that I bring this up at all as someone who's made his career out of video game development, but this is absolutely not a business for everybody. Companies outside of games tend to work shorter hours for better money, and you may find that although you were able to stick it out once for a full game project, the prospect of working through that entire process multiple times is an impalatable one. And that's not a bad thing. You absolutely need to be in love with the process of video game development. Something needs to keep you motivated, or you'll probably burn out. And it's better to get out while you're ahead, than be burnt out and unproductive in an environment that will drag others down with you. This can even come as a result of wild success. Say you were lucky and business savvy enough to be the next Marcus Parson or Eric Barone. There will be even greater pressures on you after a major hit to up your game and follow up with something spectacular. I admittedly have never been on the team of a massive industry shaking hit, so I have few first person insights, but I've seen Parson largely fade from the public eye after scrolls and halting production on 10 to the sea. Jonathan Blow has moved largely from game development to engine development, and there are many other cases of successful developers ostensibly giving up after their big hit. Success is, apparently, as much a curse as failure, but if it's the case that you have the success to make whatever choice you want, you'll be in a good position to execute on that decision. So with your career choice as it were in mind, let's assume that you've decided that you're going to make a go of it and move on to the next project. Let's consider a few things that you might want to know going into your follow-up project. Depending on the format and business model of your previous project, it's entirely possible that your next step is going to be entering into live ops on that project. You can spend months, if not years, supporting and updating an existing release project, adding to its value and, hopefully, assisting in building an even more loyal fan base. as, for fairly obvious reasons, attentive developers are well regarded in the gaming space. This has the knock-on benefit, of course, of also being able to potentially generate additional revenue through the release of expansion content or DLC, and depending on the return on your investment in the first place, might be the most prudent financial choice. Not unlike personal expense, it's always best to be living within your means, so take a moment to analyze the profits of your current project and consider the ultimate costs of what you've done. If you're making a profit, having made back the cost you sunk into the project, you, of course, also have the option to start a new project with the same scope or larger, and that's at least largely defined by what kind of budget you can carve out of the profits of your current game, but fortunately, the savvy game developer will have also used the first project as a sort of library building exercise as well. The hardest part of game development is doing it for the first time, you see, but as long as you aren't reinventing the wheel each time you start, you may find yourself finding the process becoming easier with following projects. Of course, you'll want to be ever pushing forward with your craft, but make sure that you aren't wasting the assets that you've built up with the project that you just shipped. Useful pieces of code and script, less significant props and artwork, UI, anything that can be leveraged in following projects will be another asset beyond just the money that you're receiving. I've got another video in this series all about the reuse of assets that's worth watching, so I'll link it above. You of course may wish to venture out now into new as yet untouched by you territory, but it's always a valuable exercise to perform an audit of what assets you've created for your previous project that you can make use of in whatever comes after. 
where you may have spent dozens or more man days on research and development of your core gameplay mechanics, repurposing or even cleanly reusing them elsewhere isn't just smart game development, but smart business. I don't mean to imply that every decision should be made based on financial data, of course. You may not wish your first project to define every following one, but until you do have the funds and the assets to experiment on a more grand scale, incremental shifts, one project at a time, are a valuable and cost-effective way to build up a catalog of releases and a library of useful assets to further expedite future projects. Of course, no single project is ever going to be a simple matter of drag and drop, but those wheels you don't need to reinvent, you should feel comfortable not reinventing. Regardless of what you do work on though, know that every project is a huge labor and anything you can do to make your own process easier is valuable. Take a breath, then get right back to where we were at that first video of the series. Thank you very much for joining me for this Thursday miniseries on the larger picture in making games. I hope that this has helped at least one person with the understanding the steps made in developing our projects, and that it'll help to serve as a point of reference as you go, should you decide to embark on this journey. Even if you yourself don't intend to make games of your own, I hope that perhaps this will give you some new and valuable perspective on what goes into the games that you play. If you've enjoyed this series, there's plenty more Thursday to watch, and I'd be glad if you decided to check out what we've got. If there's a topic relating to game development, or a point made in a previous video that you'd like more information about, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll look into touching on it in a future video, or pointing you in the direction of something that will help. Otherwise, thank you as always for watching. This has been the Make Your Game series. Next week, something new. But until then, thank you once again, and take care. <laughs>